Deadliest Catch is a documentary series that follows the real-life high sea adventures of Alaskan crab fishermen aboard vessels in the Bering Sea. The show has been running for 18 seasons, amassing a considerable following and spawning several spin-offs. Since it debuted, the series has followed several fishers and vessels, including the Cornelia Marie, captained by Phil Harris. The captain's two sons, Jake and Josh, were introduced in the second season, quickly becoming regulars. Unfortunately, since his debut performance, Jake has become known for his drug issues, which would eventually land him in hot water. Allegedly inspired by the 2000 Wolfgang Peterson movie, The Perfect Storm, which is based on a real-life incident, Deadliest Catch was created by Tom Beers, who spent some time aboard the fishing boat, Fierce Allegiance. At the time, Tom was filming a different series for Discovery entitled Extreme Alaska when he came up with the next idea. The show carries the name Deadliest Catch due to the numerous dangers and inherent peril of the Alaskan commercial fishing industry. In 1980, the death rate associated with this industry was at its peak. Reportedly, an average of 37 fishermen died yearly. According to a statistic from 2006, commercial fishing has a higher fatality rate than pilots, flight crews, and loggers, which are considered highly hazardous occupations. However, after establishing new safety regulations and introducing fishing permits, the number has seen a decline. Regardless, accidents still happen, especially when you are in an unstable and uncontrollable environment where 30-foot waves lashing the deck are nothing out of the ordinary. In addition, fishers are always at risk of being crushed by the heavy swinging crab cage pot smashed by the hydraulic lift or entangled in a winch. Even if the whole crew survives, the injury rate is still high, simply due to extreme weather conditions, so drowning and hypothermia are other downsides of the business. Deadliest Catch follows several groups of fishermen on the unpredictable Bering Sea during the king crab season in October and Opelia crab season in January. The series highlights the hazards on the decks and the camera crew as they perform several jobs at once, such as ducking heavy crab pots and maneuvering hundreds of pounds of crab in freezing temperatures in gale force winds. Every episode is centered around an exciting story or situation that transpires on one or more vessels. The side stories are usually concerned with the activities of one or more members, especially Greenhorns, rookie new member, and their experience managing this job. The vessel's captains are featured prominently, and their camaraderie and relationships with the crew and other captains are highlighted. Similar to many Discovery series of this type, the competitiveness and friendly rivalry is a striking theme because after all, the crew and their captains are trying to reel in as much crab as possible to earn the most remuneration. One of the most known rivalries is between Sig Hansen of the Northwestern and Jonathan and Andy Hillstrand of the Time Bandit. If you ever wondered about the filming and the camera crew, they arrive a week before the season begins set up cameras, and ensure everyone is up to speed regarding training and gear. While filming the series might seem attractive, it's not a pleasure cruise, and the film crew can't jump onto a different boat and head to a nice cozy hotel. In fact, they live with the fishermen on the ship for three to four weeks. Given that the quarters on the vessel are tight, every boat has only two film crew members who have to capture the most interesting and extreme shots while experiencing cold winds splashes of freezing water, and avoiding numerous crew members running errands on deck. The reality series is basically a filmed record of everyday life on the boat. It follows people when they are at their best, but also worst behavior, which is typical in such a stressful line of business, and when you have limited space. That is why the production often has to censor inappropriate language and gestures, and blur some scenes to make them appropriate for TV audiences. Jacob Jake Harris is a sea crab fisherman and TV personality who gained popularity starring in Deadliest Catch. He was born on the 23rd of October, 1985, in Seattle, Washington State, USA, to parents Mary and Phil Harris. The latter died in 2010. Given that his father had decades-long experience as a fisherman, Jake and his brother Josh developed an interest and affinity for fishing from a young age. Even talking of his education, Jake did attend high school but simultaneously worked as a fisherman with his father. Before becoming a full-time fisherman, Jake worked various other jobs too, including as a pizza delivery boy. When he was 19, he joined his father's crew on the boat named Cornelia Marie. Initially, he occupied the ship's bait boy position, but eventually moved up the ladder. His and his family's life changed in 2006 after his father's vessel was chosen for deadliest catch. Jake, his father, and his brother made their debut appearance in the second season, becoming TV celebrities 
and gaining enormous exposure for their business, which resulted in a significant rise in their net worth. Following his father's death, Jake went on a downward spiral, joined the Northwestern boat crew, but didn't stay long with them. In 2012, he left Deadliest Catch. On the other hand, his brother bought the Cornelia Marie vessel with Casey McManus to continue his father's profession. Then he and his brother co-wrote a book about their father entitled Captain Phil Harris, The Legendary Crab Fisherman, Our Hero, Our Dad, which was published in 2014. Reportedly, since his teenage years, Jake often had problems with drugs and alcohol consumption. According to his statement, Jake was a skater and a bad one, and he often got involved in accidents resulting in injuries, particularly fractures. Unfortunately for Jake, the following period after his father died would pose many obstacles and difficulties. The same year, Jake crashed his car in Seattle and fled the scene. Subsequently, he was busted for driving under the influence (DUI) and also charged with hit and run and driving when his license was suspended. The police officer said Mr. Harris was spotted driving a BMW 3 Series erratically by a citizen in Shoreline, Washington. We were able to locate his vehicle by aircraft and he was pulled over in the Seattle area. The car was registered to his father. He failed a field sobriety test and refused to take a toxicological test. In 2016, Jake was assaulted, robbed, and abandoned, being kicked out of a moving car. Luckily for Jake, some passers-by spotted him bleeding on the side of the road and called the cops and ambulance. He then spent some time in an intensive care unit due to the severity of his injuries, especially to the head. Despite this near-death experience, he perpetuated his unhealthy habits, and in 2017, he was arrested for possessing Xanax and crystal meth. Jake was supposed to appear at the hearing in Phoenix, failed to do so, and so a bench warrant was issued for his arrest. In an interview, Josh talked about Jake's issues, saying, My brother's been going through issues. He's lost in drugs still. Jake's got to take care of his own stuff right now. Deal with his demon. In January 2019, Jake was seen under the influence of alcohol or drugs in a state park in Skagit County, Washington State. He was then involved in a car chase, which you can watch on YouTube. He refused to take a sobriety test. At the time of this incident, he had already been arrested twice for DUI. Running from law enforcement is never a good idea, and Jake learned it the hard way. He was eventually caught and arrested. A stolen weapon and drugs were found in his vehicle, 14 grams of heroin, and Jake pleaded guilty to two felony charges. In August 2019, Jake was sentenced to 18 months in jail. His brother spoke to TV show Ace, saying he's been doing well and taking baby steps with him, and he's still working through this stuff. If he's comfortable and feels good enough and strong enough to return to work, then we're here with open arms for him. Adding that Jake was in a relationship with a woman who had children from a previous relationship and that he loved being a dad. However, after Jake was released from jail, he slipped and returned to his pattern of behavior. He was rearrested in May 2021 for DUI, driving while license revoked suspended, first degree, and driving without an ignition interlock when required. According to reports, he was busted in Mount Vernon, Washington State, after he was caught breaking the speed limit, and when he was pulled over, he seemed to be under the influence. The police officers questioned him about it, and he claimed that he was on prescription drugs, but refused to reveal which drugs he'd taken. He refused to take a sobriety test and so was charged with DUI. Jake was released after posting a $50,000 bail. Later in an interview, Jake talked about his father's death and its impact, revealing, I got a big hole in my heart, and I tried to fill it up with everything that wasn't good for it. It took me a while to realize what I really wanted out of life. It was a big trip up, threw my world upside down, put me in a real sad place, kind of made things worse before they got better. So, did he return to Deadliest Catch? Yes. He appeared in the 16th season finale and has been actively working with his brother on their father's boat. Jake has also appeared in the show's spin-off series, Deadliest Catch Bloodline, which premiered in 2020. The series follows Josh Harris, his partner Casey McManus, and Jeff Silva as they hunt for tuna, barracuda, and other species in Hawaii. Jake's father, who had been fishing from the age of eight, experienced numerous accidents during his decades-long career as a crab fisherman. Then, in 2008, he was thrown from his bunk during a storm, resulting in several broken ribs. After spending a couple of hours coughing up blood, Jake and Josh convinced him to see a doctor and tasked the film crew to monitor his condition. Later, it was established that he had a pulmonary embolism, a blockage of an artery in a lung by a substance. Due to this condition, 
he was forced to quit fishing for a year, but returned to the show and his job in 2009. On January 29, 2010, during the show's sixth season, he suffered a stroke while offloading crab at St. Paul Island, Alaska. Phil was taken to a hospital for surgery and put into an induced coma to reduce intracranial pressure caused by the stroke. Phil awoke from the coma and his condition seemingly improved as he could hold hands and talk to people. Even his doctors were astonished by his quick improvement. However, it didn't last long. On the 9th of February, he had an intracranial bleed or hemorrhage and passed away at the age of 53. Jake and Joshua addressed their father's passing, saying, it's with great sadness that we say goodbye to our dad, Captain Phil Harris. Dad has always been a fighter and continued to be until the end for the crew and us. He was someone who never backed down. We will remember and celebrate that strength. Thanks to everyone for their prayers. Phil's last appearance in Deadliest Catch was in the sixth season. Jake Harris's life story shows that those with celebrity status and family background are not immune to mundane sins and transgressions. Even the most prominent celebrities have had their share of problems with the law or themselves. After all, we are all human, and humans do make mistakes. Luckily, Jake has now set out on a straight. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.